Hello, I'm Virtual SG, and I'm about to walk through the process of creating patterns with Clip Studio Paint. But first, in addition to everything I talked about in part one, I want to point out two more important things about creating image material. And then I promise I'll focus on actually making patterns. I'm just going to open this PNG file, and if I edit register material image, I want to emphasize here that only the image area is being registered, not the entire canvas. Any unnecessary empty space is excluded from the material, right? Okay, so I'm going to cancel this. Now, if I make a weird selection like this and then edit register material image, notice the image is based on the selection regardless of whether there's any image there or not. And this can be extremely useful or a giant pain in the ass, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. But the point is to make sure that you select exactly what you want because the selection method won't just crop to the image area the way it does when you register the whole layer. So I'm going to cancel this. Now, there's another completely different way to go about creating image material, and that's to convert the layer rather than registering it. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that I've got my brush tool selected, and this is for the sake of demonstrating something specific in a moment. What I can do here is right-click this layer and choose Convert Layer. And that brings up a properties box where I can rename the layer for starters and change these properties. And I'm going to change this from raster layer to image material layer. I'm also going to keep original layer and I don't want to change the expression color or the blending mode. And I couldn't change the vector settings if I wanted to because this is not a vector layer. Now when I hit OK, I've got a copy of that layer, but not an exact copy. This is an object layer. If I try to use my paintbrush on this layer, I can't because this has been converted to a specific kind of image material that's default state is that of an object layer, which means I need my object tool to manipulate it. And you can see that this object is defined by the image area only and not the entire canvas, just like when you register a layer. But the super important thing here is that this image material is not saved to any material folder. It exists exclusively in this project because converting a layer is not the same as registering a layer or a selection for that matter. Register means save and convert means to just change it. Now this ability to change your layer without saving it is very useful when making patterns and I'll show you why in just a moment. So I'll start with this truck. Now I want to create a pattern to decorate this big flat surface that I've drawn here. I could start a whole new project and make a pattern that way, but the beauty of the materials functionality is that you can just whip up a material on a whim. Now I'm going to demonstrate a lot of things about materials, but how you use them and how you make them is completely up to you. For example, I want to make sure I'm on a new layer when I create a material or a pattern, but that's just common layer management stuff. It's not a special rule for making material. So new layer here, and I draw a little thingamabob like this, and now I'm going to convert this layer to image material. I'm not registering this, just converting the layer. So there's no folder options to save to here, and I don't want to keep the original. Now, this layer is a material, i.e. an object layer, and I have no choice but to switch to my object tool in order to do anything with it. And among the object tool properties is this tile option, just like in the register materials dialog box. So I can turn this on and off at any time, and that little thingamabob is now tiled across the canvas. I can't just make adjustments to it by grabbing anywhere, I can only grab the object box. The pattern is like a projection, it's not really there in a way. Because it's such a small little thingamabob, you can barely even see through this pattern. So I'm going to use my history palette to go back to when I first drew it. So here I am back in time where this was just a drawing on a regular layer, and now I'm going to make a selection. So now when I convert the layer, it's going to reference the selection. And you'll see that as soon as I deselect and then get my object tool, and then enable the tile function. And as you can see, the thingamabob is much more spread out because the conversion referenced all that empty space in my selection. Now I'm going to delete this layer and make a new layer. 
I don't want to draw on this layer. I should have named it so it would be clear, but this is the truck. I don't want to make materials on that layer. So a new layer, and I make some random shapes and whatnot, and I'll make a selection, and I have a shortcut to convert the layer in my selection launcher. This toolbar is called the selection launcher. So I'll convert that way. Uh, now I deselect, and then go to the object tool, and enable tile, and I click this option, and you can see what that does. So I can say, oh, I like that, and I'll put that pattern here. Now, once I like something, the first thing I usually do is duplicate that layer, so I have a backup if things get messy, and I hide the original layer and lock it. I just want an easy way to get back to this point if I start messing things up. So now, this is no big deal. I just want this right here on this truck, so I'm going to rasterize this layer and cut it out with the selection tool. I'm already going off on tangents enough. I'm not going to explain everything I'm doing here. Now I unhide and unlock the original and duplicate it again because I'm going to mess around with it again. I lock and hide one of them, grab the object tool, flip it vertically, and I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to slide it over. I don't want to grab it and move it because I don't want to move it around randomly. I just want to slide it across the canvas like this. So now that I've got it over here, I've changed my mind. I want the design to face the other way, so I'm going to flip it back the way it was. And I'm going to do something with the other one, but let me finish this one first, so I'll rasterize this and cut it accordingly. I'm using keyboard shortcuts more often now, so you may not see me doing everything, but I'm telling you everything that I'm doing on the assumption that you've been paying attention to these videos and are familiar enough with Clip Studio Paint to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've got this side of the truck the way I want it. Now for the other side. I'll just make a selection and flip that. And make some little adjustments to everything, you know, just doing the old artwork thing. Here's my original layer, and what should I do with these finished layers? I'm going to combine them. There's many ways to accomplish that, so I'm not going to talk about that. And I'm going to move that layer down just because I, you know, I'm just managing my layers the way I manage my layers. So this layer, I gotta decide what to do next. Grab my object tool so I can reset the tile to default. And now I'll play with the transform modes. I'm pretty sure scale and rotate is the default setting. So I'm going to set this to free transform. And when I manipulate the object, it now does weird and interesting things. Now, these more impressive transformation options can be tricky. They're definitely easier to work with when tiling is not enabled. But I'm trying different transformation modes, as you can see. I'm now beyond the point of no return. Uh, there's definitely a learning curve when it comes to understanding how best to use each mode. And I think you can imagine, if I was to turn off tiling, that would speed up my understanding of these modes. It's the tiling projection that's the problem here. It's all, it, it, we're being dazzled by that. All right, so that was fun. And I never duplicated this layer, so I don't have a backup. I could control Z or go back in the history, but I'm just gonna delete this and say that the purpose of that was to demonstrate that I can just draw anything and start experimenting with image material, tiling, and transform modes. One of the things I'm realizing is that it's a good rule of thumb to make small adjustments with one of the dynamic modes and then switch back to scale and rotate to fine tune. Another thing though, for example, the perspective mode here is trying to transform this drawing according to Clip Studio Paint's internal logic. But I didn't use Clip Studio tools to establish the perspective on this truck. I drew this, you know, freehand, right? And this is not to suggest that I can't get the results I'm looking for. It's just that Clip Studio Paint is not going to do this for me. So I'm messing around here and I've lost control again. And I now realize that I've deleted the first pattern I applied to the back of the truck. I'm messing up on multiple levels here. So I'm going to have to use the history palette to get back to where I was. And all of this is great because I don't want to give you the impression that using Clip Studio Paint or any other sophisticated art software should be a walk in the park. There are challenges, but I do want to get back on track, so now that I've got my layer back, I'm going to draw this, make a selection, convert the layer, deselect, grab my object tool, enable tile, 
Make sure my transform mode is set for scale and rotate and position this like so. And then I'm gonna try the distort mode and make a small adjustment. Now after making this move, it occurred to me that I could just clip this to the side of the truck and then use my selection transform tool to fine tune it into position. The transform selection tool works a little differently than the object transform tool and it felt more intuitive to use that. And now I've demonstrated that with a little practice, a bit of patience and some good old fashioned determination, you too can draw a truck and apply a random pattern on the side of it as well. But wait, there's more. In the next video, I'm going to be demonstrating what it's like to make patterns that are absolutely not random.